This is a short video uh, more about the basis for its topology. And so uh, in the previous video, if you watched it, just, you know, I'm fixing a set X and I've got a topology T and we said, I'll use fancy B as the basis for that topology. And remember that um, this thing acts as like the building blocks for T and uh, in a nutshell, for any non-empty thing that's in T, you should be able to write it as a union of these things from B. I should also be a little bit more clear. What is this basis? You're picking some stuff out of T and you're saying, these are the few things that I need from T to tell you about all the things from T if I'm allowed to use unions to put things from B together. And so what you've got then is maybe you've got a basis. Maybe you've written one down, say, Let's say, you know, B is equal to this set and that set and blah, blah, blah. Maybe it'd be really hard to actually check that this is a basis. You know, maybe you've written down this set B and you want to say, yes, this is a basis and think about what would that involve? Well, based on the definition, you'd need to run through every single set that's in T and show someone why anything out of T is a union of these special sets here. That could be kind of exhausting to do. And so uh, fortunately, there are some equivalent ways to think about what a basis is. So we talked in the last video about the definition of a basis. Now we're going to look at some different characterizations of what a basis is. And so again, I'll keep that thing there. And so one way to think about uh, is a particular collection of subsets from T a basis, how would we tell, uh, is the following. So B is a basis for T, let's say uh, if and only if. Um, the following happens. So these two things should happen. So first thing that should happen is your whole set X should be able to be written as the union of a bunch of things out of B. So regular B, where regular B lives in fancy B. Um, and then the second thing, which is a little bit more complicated, and we're gonna draw some pictures to kind of think about why it needs to be this complicated. Um, if you had two things, say regular B1 and regular B2, that came from your fancy set or set fancy B here, this thing that I want to conclude the basis. So if you have these two things, and what if you had an element X, so X is just an element of your set, say, and let's say that X is in the intersection of B1 uh, and B2. Uh, here's what should happen. Then there should be a set regular B that's an element of fancy B, such that a couple things happen. So first, X needs to live in regular B here. Um, and the last thing is that B needs to be a subset of the intersection of B1 and B2. Now, um, this seems a little bit complicated. What do we want to be careful of? So just be careful. Why is two uh, necessary here? It's because it's very common to think that maybe the maybe it'd be nice if the intersection of two things from your basis should also be something that's in your basis, and that's just not true. And so that's why this is complicated. Uh, so be careful. So B1 intersect B2 need not be in B. And so to, to, to illustrate this a little bit, a good example is, again, thinking about where do we draw stuff? Well, usually like the plane in two dimensions. And so um, if I was to take, say, uh, a basis for the usual topology, when I say usual topology, I mean like based on the usual distance function, you know, like the distance from 0, 0 to 1, 1 is square root of 2 based on the Pythagorean theorem, that good old stuff, right? Um, what we could do is we could say that instead of using open balls like, a, like we usually like to do, we could also talk about like um, these kind of open, when I say open, I mean these rectangles where maybe I don't include the edges here. We'll practice writing this a little bit more uh, formally like this later on, but I might as well do it since I'm talking about it right now. You could talk about this rectangle here and all the stuff inside. It's this interval A comma B, where I mean that is like, you know, open interval there, where I don't include the endpoints is what the parentheses mean. And then this is like the Cartesian product, if you've heard of that before, with C comma D here, where that's this interval along what you probably call the Y axis. And so when you look at this product here, I'm talking about what are all the ordered pairs that are in the shaded region here that I have. And so my point though, is that, you know, these would work just as well to be a basis for the usual topology um, on, uh, on R2. And so I'm gonna kind of get rid of these now. So why would that be good? 
Uh, well, one thing, you know, if you took any point in here, sure, there's a, one of these rectangles that fits around it. So what that should convince yourself of is that, well, the entire plane could be thought of as a union of all these rectangles. I hope you agree that that's satisfied. And now the more complicated thing is what if you had um, two, two, two of these kind of open rectangles, say. So what if you had a picture that looks something like this? So there's one of your rectangle, I'll call that regular B1. And let's say you had somebody else. You called it, you know, regular B2. Maybe it'd be good if I use different colors. You know, I have this iPad, it's like really expensive and can do at least two colors. There we go, cool. All right, so then this one's name is B2. The point then is what happens when you actually look at B1 intersect B2? Now maybe, maybe I'll go up here. Let's say you had some point X that lived in their intersection. Okay, uh, cool, there it is right there. So what is what does uh, what does B1 intersect B2 actually look like? And so, well, in this case, this is kind of nice because well, B1 intersect B2 is itself one of these rectangles. In other words, this is a, 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 a an uncommon case where the intersection of these two things actually is something from your basis. So that's pretty nice. So in this example, you know, all this extra stuff down here isn't really necessary. But to really drive home why this stuff's necessary, let's go to our other version of the plane that we like, or maybe instead of thinking of these open rectangles, I'll think of them as open, open balls again. So you know, what if I had these two open balls? I have this one, and I'll use a different color again. I'll call that B1 though to start. And uh, what if I had this one too? So this is B2, and what if I took someone named X in their intersection? Now, I tried to draw this a little bit sloppy. When you actually look at what their intersection is, you know, that is not a like perfect, it's not a circle, you know, it's not a perfect open ball. So in that case, the intersection, B1 intersect B2, is not something that lives in there. Uh, so what do we have to do then? So what this idea of a basis is saying uh, is that we should be able to find essentially a smaller open ball that contains my purple point, that's what this part says, and that the ball should fit entirely within the intersection of B1 and B2. And so if I, maybe I'll uh, highlight those couple things with a different color, there are lots of colors here. So there exists a B such that X is in B and this happens. Just to show you here, sure, I'll zoom in a whole bunch. Okay, the purple is X. Yeah, I could draw a perfect ball around that thing. I could find some radius to make sure that that blue ball definitely fits inside the white one and the green one. Uh, I'm sorry, well yeah, so it fits inside the orange altogether. It fits inside the intersection, that's the orange, that's what I'm trying to say, and it also contains my purple point. So that example on the right, this one really emphasizes why this extra stuff uh, is really necessary down here uh, in that case.